Hello and welcome back to Lectures on Linear Algebra. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about the matrix representations of linear transformations. That's a mouthful, so let's get into it. First, let's remember uh, what it means to be a linear transformation. So a linear transformation is essentially just a function, but it's a function which maps one vector space to another one, and it has to satisfy a couple of properties. And these properties are gonna be familiar ones uh, now that we've gotten this far in linear algebra. They're the, they're the linearity properties. So to be linear, um, essentially, this function between the two vector spaces has to preserve the vector space's operations. So property one here says that the scalar multiplication on the inside, this has been this right here, this operation is being done in the vector space V, the domain space, um, must be able to be factored out in some sense, factored out or, or uh, distribute, the elk should be able to distribute inside, but then the operation, the scalar multiplication is being done in W because L of X it ends up in the image space, the range space, which is W. So these two operations have to be, the, 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 the transformation, the function itself has to obey this operation. And the same thing has to be true with addition, so the vector addition. This addition is happening in V, X plus Y is happening in V. In L of X plus L of Y, this, this is the circle plus, this one's happening in W. Okay, so in your book and probably in most examples that you do, um, you're not gonna write the operations in the, different, in the separate notation the way I've done in this definition, but it's very important, especially when you first start studying this, to keep in mind that these operations are not the, the same operation necessarily. They're, they're the respective addition and scalar multiplication within their own vector spaces, within the vector space that you're working in. Okay, so a linear transformation is just a function between vector spaces which satisfies these two properties, which both can be summed up in, in, that, in saying that uh, the function obeys the vector space structure in some sense, the operations. Okay, and so th there's a lot of examples of linear transformations, but the most important one for us is going to be the fact that uh, matrix multiplication is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. So if our matrix is in Rm by n, then we've already talked about uh, a few times that multiplication by a vector in Rn can be thought of as a function which takes that vector in Rn to some new vector, maybe call it y in this case, in Rm. Okay, so m by n, the, n, the inner dimensions of n and n by 1, the n's cancel and we get an m by 1. Okay, so I'll let you check the two properties from the previous page, but um, they're pretty straightforward just following matrix rules, so I'll, I'll write them out, but um, the rule, the, the things we need to check are that a times alpha x equals alpha times a times x, and of course we know that's true. And for L2, that A, matrix multiplication, can distribute over vector addition. And it can, because as long as the matrix stays on the left, we do have a distributive property. So you should check these in more detail, but they do work out. And so matrix multiplication is a linear transformation of Rn to Rm, so of the, of the two vector spaces. Okay? And now it turns out that if we're dealing just with finite dimensional vector spaces, V and W, then a linear transformation between these can always be represented by a matrix multiplication itself. So no matter what the linear transformation is, we can find a matrix that does the same thing to these vectors um, that the transformation does, okay? And to actually determine what the matrix should be and how to write down the matrix, to do, to do all the work, it takes a lot of writing, and, and we did it in class, or we will do it in class, if you're watching this before class. We'll work out all the details in class, but it turns out that the matrix that represents L, so this is called a matrix representation, this is gonna be very important moving forward for us. So the matrix representation of our linear transformation, it's gonna be a vector in our n, M by N, okay? So if V is N-dimensional and uh, w is m dimensional, dimensional. Remember, the dimension is the number of vectors in a basis. Um, then we're going to be able to find a matrix, which we'll call A subscript L for, for the, this talk, um, which must be in Rm by n. So it's going to be multiplied by a vector in Rn and give back a vector in Rm. Now, where are these vectors going to come from? We, these need to be vertical vectors in Rm by n, where the in reality, these vector spaces, V and W, could be vec the vectors could be anything. They could be functions, 
They could be matrices themselves. Um, so we need to turn these into vertical vectors somehow, and we do that by writing uh, all the vectors in V and in W using their coordinates with respect to these bases. Okay, so the choice of basis matters a lot. Um, it's going to change the matrix that we get. So the matrix itself, it's a, I wrote A sub L here. It actually could be written as A sub L V W, okay, where the V and the W would tell you what the bases are. But just for this sake, um, how do we make the matrix, right? Well, we make the matrix by saying that A sub L is going to be equal to, uh, we're going to tell what its columns are. The columns are the, of the matrix, matrix are going to be L, the transformation, applied to the first basis vector, L of V1. And then, after it's been applied, now it lives in W, write that in W coordinates. And then the second column is going to be L applied to V2, written in W coordinates, and so on. And so there's going to be N columns. We're going to apply L to all N basis vectors of, of V, and write each of those in W coordinates. So the W coordinates will be in RM. There's N columns, so this will be an M by N matrix. All right, so this is an M by N matrix. M rows, N columns. And now, uh, how do we use this matrix? Well, it turns out that uh, the way that this works is we want to apply L. So we want to apply L to some vector X in V. Okay, then the W coordinates of the output we're going to try to do everything in terms of matrices and vertical vectors. So the W coordinates of the output, if we know the coordinates, we know the answer, right? Is going to be equal to this matrix A sub L times the V coordinates of the input. Okay, and so we can represent this L, this linear transformation, as a matrix product. And this is exactly the matrix product that we're going to use. All right, so it takes a little getting used to, um, but the main idea here is that we, we've spent some time studying matrices, and so we want to take advantage of everything that we've learned. And we want to study functions now, which obey these linear properties, so we call them linear transformations. And it turns out that we can do that by just turning them into matrices and using everything we learned about matrices. Okay, so that really this is just another way to look at something that we've already studied. So that's going to be very good for us. All right, so let's end this slide, this presentation with one example. And for this, I want to find the matrix representation of the differentiation transformation. So what's that? Well, that's just the derivative. So we'll all name it D. D is going to map polynomials in P3 to polynomials in P2 in reality, but we're going to think of them as still living in P3. And how's it going to do it? Well, it's going to take the function, and it's going to send it to its derivative, P prime. Okay, and so the first thing we need to do is choose, if we want to write a, this as, a, as a, a matrix, then we need to choose coordinates. So this says to use the standard coordinates of P3. So the standard coordinates of P3, you'll remember, are just the building block functions, x squared, x, and then the function 1. These are the, these are the standard coordinates. And we know that these coincide when we turn these into vertical vectors, right? These coincide with the standard basis of R3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. All right? And now to make the matrix for D, we need to, so that we, to get the columns of D, the first column of D, we need to take, we need to apply the operator, so the D, this is the matrix D, so this should be A subscript D. So to find the columns of this matrix A, we need to apply the operator, the transformation, to this first basis vector. So we take x squared, take its derivative, and then we write it in coordinates. Okay, and these will be standard coordinates. And then the second column, we take just plain x prime and put it in coordinates. And the third column, we take our function 1, take its derivative, and put it in e coordinates. Okay, so off to the side here, let's take these derivatives. The derivative of x squared is, of course, 2x. And in coordinates, that's going to be the vector. So maybe if we're not super familiar or comfortable with coordinates yet, this is going to be 0x squared plus 2x plus 0 times 1. And so as a vertical vector, this is going to be the vector 0, 2, 0. 
okay? Now we do the same thing with x. We take its derivative, we get one. And again, if you write it out as a linear combination of the basis vectors, you get, you'll end up with, I won't write this one out, but zero x squared plus zero x plus one. And then finally, when we take the derivative of one, we get zero, right? The derivative of a constant is zero. And so its coordinate vector is zero, zero, zero. Okay, and now to write the matrix that represents this transformation, we just list these columns in order. X squared first, then X, then one. So this will be zero, two, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so this is the matrix that represents the differentiation operator on P3, the derivative on P3. Okay, now before I leave you here, how would we use this to take the derivative of something like P of X equals, let's say, 3X squared minus 2X plus 2? Well, we need to write this in its coordinates. So this is going to be as a vertical vector in coordinates. This would be 3, negative 2, 2. And then we apply the matrix to this. So D, the differentiation operator of this vector, is going to be this matrix, A, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, times the coordinate vector for P, so 3, negative 2, 2. And now we just do matrix multiplication, and we end up with 0, 6, negative 2. And so these are the coordinates of the answer, so the output. And if we want, we can turn that back into a polynomial. And this tells us that P prime of X should be 0X squared plus 6X minus 2. And of course, we can easily check that, and that's the right answer. So we can check that just by using calculus. Okay? So hopefully this is a somewhat interesting example, but also hopefully that it sheds some light on the matrix representation of linear transformations. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.